I was mistaken in what I had shared. It says, شروط جمع تأخير يشترط في جمع تأخير تحقق أمرين وهما النية إذ لابد من إن إقاد النية جمع تأخير عند الجم عند الجمهور قبل انتهاء وقت الصلاة الأولى. So over here, if I'm planning on um, intending either delaying or making the prayers early, I have to make that intention before the ending of the first prayer window. So for example, if I plan on praying Luhr and Asr together, then I have to make my intention to combine them before when? Uh, before the Luhr time finishes, meaning before the Asr time starts. Um, and, and that's what um, he had shared with me and what he had mentioned, so I just wanted to make a correction uh, from what I had mentioned last week. Jazakallah khair wa barakallahu fi. Um, this week's question. Uh, is zakat al-mal required by someone who is in debt and saving money to pay off those debts? Um, examples of debt, student, auto, and mortgage. So over here, there are two types of debts that are important to keep in mind. And um, there are things that what I call zakat deductible and things that are not zakat deductible. Uh, and from those things are unfortunately none of the things that were mentioned here. So if I have a mortgage, if I have student loans, if I'm paying off a car, these are what we would call long-term debts that I have a uh, contractual agreement with a particular entity versus me having an agreement with an individual. So for example, if I borrowed $3,000 from my friend and he's asking for the money immediately, He's saying, listen, I need the money now. That money for me is considered zakat deductible, meaning that I can actually take that off the money that I have. So the assets that I own, I can subtract $3,000 from that. But if I have long-term debts that I'm paying off monthly, the only thing I can remove from that are the payments that I've made for that particular month. That's it. That's, so if I haven't made the payment yet, like so for example, today is like what the third or fourth of Rajab. Um, so if, if my hawl, if my nislab is going to be the 15th of Rajab, for example, and I have payments that I have to pay that are going to be after that within the month, then what I can do is I can take all of those payments for the month, right? Not for the year, but the payments for the month, and I can uh, subtract those from the assets that I'm paying zakat on. Example of this, if my mortgage is 2000 if my student debt is 1000 and my car payment is $500 for that month, then I can subtract 2000 plus 1000 plus 500. So I can take off $3,500 from the entire amount of money that I have to give for zakat. Meaning that if my zakatable amount is $10,000, I can subtract that $3,500 from that that month. That's it. I cannot take it out for the year. And someone might ask, okay, well, what about the previous months? The previous months I've already been paying. Right, I've already been making those payments, which is why I can, they've already been removed from the amount of money that I have or the assets that I have in hand. But I cannot remove the entire amount again because these are long-term debts. Um, uh, Christians say that there are historical accounts of Jesus being crucified and say IF4135 is historically inaccurate. How would you respond to this? I'm having trouble and it's causing, it's causing me issue or it's causing me problems. What is the end of the question? Uh, how would you respond to this? I'm having trouble and it's causing me doubt about Isa and Islam. Are there any proofs that Jesus wasn't crucified without being biased? Yes. So even if you go into the historical accounts, and there are two ways to answer this. There are two ways to answer this. Uh, the first way is using their own historical resources and their own historical references. Even if you look at the Gospels, how many of the, those apostles of those Gospels met Isa? So out of the four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how many of them met Jesus? You guys know? Zero. None of them. <laughs> None of them actually met Jesus. So they don't have any personal accounts and they have no eyewitness accounts of what actually happened to Isa alayhi salam. Uh, so this is one problem. There's historical inconsistencies even within their own historical tradition on what happened with Isa alayhi salam. And even in our tradition, there are two opinions, right? There's the Jumhur opinion, there's a the mainstream opinion, and then there's a minority opinion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala kin shubbihala. Right? And there was a likeness that was brought. So if as an onlooker, as an onlooker, there is someone who sees a likeness of somebody who looks like Isa alayhi salam, what is he going to assume? Right? That Isa was crucified. Right? That, that is what the assumption is going to be. 
that is what the assumption is going to be, that he's going to assume and he's going to see that Isa a.s. was crucified. This is one answer. The second answer is, and this is a minority opinion within the, within the Muslims, is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَا وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ Right? So they, they did not crucify him and they did not kill him. So here, who is the they that they're talking about? So over here, there are two ways to understand this. Either, number one, that he was not crucified and he was not killed. Yes, this is one understanding. The other understanding is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the pronoun, they did not do it, meaning that, okay, he was killed, but it wasn't the Jews who killed him. And some people might say, okay, well, doesn't this cause a problem with our mainstream thought that the return of Isa and you know the Dajjal and all of these other things I would say yes I agree how do those people answer so these minority Muslims how would they answer this issue and how would they answer this problem they say okay well what are the pillars of Islam what are the pillars of Islam and what are the pillars of Iman I have to believe in Allah right I have to believe in his angels I have to believe in his books I have to believe in his messengers I have to believe in Huh? The day of judgment, and I have to believe in the divine pre decree. Are any of these in how I should believe in Isa or when he comes back or if he comes back? No. So, this is not considered a fundamental of faith, right? This is not from the six pillars of Iman. So, if a person believes this or does not believe this, does it affect his asl of Iman? Does it affect the foundation of his belief? No, it doesn't. It's, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Is it important? Yes, I think so. I think it's very important that we believe in Dajjal. I think it's very important we believe in Nuzul Isa. I think it's very important we believe in all of these things. But if a Muslim doesn't believe in those things, it does not, it does not mean that he is outside the fold of Islam. We can say he's mistaken. We can say you're wrong. We can say I disagree with you. But we cannot say that this person is outside the fold of uh, Islam. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Why is the meat other than pork in the U.S. markets haram? Uh, this is a question I had answered before. If you go to our Facebook page, there is a playlist. It's called Juma QA. Uh, you can go through that, and the, the questions, inshallah, are listed there. And I've, I've answered this one previously. Uh, what do I do with knowledge that a family member caused me pain mentally and physically because of black magic? Um, you have to prove, number one, that black, black magic was done. Um, and if you can prove that, that it is done, then you can warn from this family member, right? It's not, it's, it's, there's a difference between breaking ties and not having a relationship. So all of us here, we're Muslim. Yes, alhamdulillah. And because we're Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا تهاجر أخاق فوق ثلاث. He says, don't abandon your brother for more than three days. But sometimes we have friends and we have family members, maybe two, three weeks, a month, and we don't talk to them. Yes? But I'm not intentionally what? abandoning them, right? This is what the Prophet Sallallahu is warning us from, that I don't intentionally go out of my way to avoid this brother, to avoid speaking to them. But is it possible that someone has hurt me and it's possible that I can do three, one of three things. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has given me three choices. Either I can forgive this person, right? And what does forgiveness mean? Meaning that I forgive him in this world, I forgive him in the next world, and I keep the same relationship the way it was. And this is Hadha Akmal Iman, right? This is the highest position, highest status. This is how Abu Bakr dealt with Misla, right? His, uh, one of his cousins. The second one is that I can forgive him in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hold him accountable in this world. And how can I do that? I can go to court. If it, somebody stole my money from me, I can get my money back from that person, right? There are a number of things I can do. But even then I have a choice. Do I want to keep the relationship the same way? That's my choice. It, does, it has nothing to do with forgiveness, right? It has nothing to do with forgiveness in the sense that if somebody steals money from me, I can be like, listen, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not going to say anything. I've forgiven you for that, but I don't want to have a relationship with you anymore. There's nothing wrong with that. Changing the nature of the relationship, there's nothing wrong with that. And the last choice I have is I cannot forgive this person. Because everybody owns their own forgiveness. I can't force somebody to forgive anyone else. And if I don't forgive that person, at that point, the moment I've chosen not to forgive this person, I can't keep coming back to that person and telling them I don't forgive them. Now, instead of me being the one who is oppressed, I am oppressing this person. Because the moment I decided I'm not forgiving this person, what, am, what have I told him and what have I told myself? I said, I've left this issue for 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to decide us and he's going to handle this and the, and the relationship we have, we're going to change it. Listen, if I see you being oppressed, if I see you being hurt, I'll, I'll, I'll help you, but we're not going to be friends. And I am not obligated to be friends with every single person, every single family, family member. Even with us, we have family members some we're close with and some we're further away with, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some, we have some friends we're closer with than we are with other family members. Well, that's this not a problem. This is not an issue. This is from the different nature and the characteristics that we all have, and Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.